Hi, this is Ed. Today we're going to take you on a tour of our factory where we build Wright Stander mowers. We're going to go through each area of the factory and show you what goes on in those different areas. But first, a little bit how we started. We started out originally as a landscaping company in the early 80s. In the mid 80s, uh, we also had a software business for commercial landscapers and uh, we began making accessories, grass gobbler and velky sulky. And it was in the uh, late 90s that we came out with the stand on mower. We went to market and um, really we were lawnmower guys, we were uh, mechanics building these machines from the ground up. And today a lot has changed but a few things have remained true. That's that first and foremost uh, the commercial landscaper um, comes first to mind when we build a mower. It's not done until it's good for commercial use. So we're going to go through all the different areas of the company. I hope you enjoy this tour. This is the first step of the process. We start with raw material. For example, here we have a stack of quarter inch plate steel. We work with tube, bar, strip. All the metal is in its most basic form at this phase in the process. One of the first things we do to the raw material is we cut the tube. So here we have a few pieces of frame tubing that are getting cut up. Now as a fabricator, we actually don't machine anything here. There's a lot of great companies out there that do machining for much less costly than we can. And it's a whole expertise and industry to itself. Now, we do a couple primary processes here. For example, this mill right here, we use it to chamfer tubing. So here is a little pivot housing. We chamfer it so the bushing will easily slide in. We'll drill holes, tap holes for grease fittings, those kinds of things here. Um, and this is where those operations take place. One thing that's important to us as a lean manufacturer is that um, we don't always have a really big high production machine to make a part because oftentimes those kinds of machines require really big changeover times. In order for us to be able to flexibly build whatever mower is next in the schedule, we often downsize our equipment. So here's an example of that. These presses here, rather than setting up one bending machine for five different parts, changing between those setups, we have a bender already configured for each of those different parts. So we put the part in, we bend it, and we go make a mower. We don't have to do a big setup and then run a ton of parts that all sit in inventory and slow everything down and contribute to bad quality. This, you'll see this through our process that oftentimes we downsize the machine to increase the flexibility. So this is where we start processing the flat steel. This is a laser cutter here. And what we do is when we get an order, we batch a group of mowers. Typically it's one tractor trailer load of mowers and we group all those parts together and the computer fits them all together to nest them to use the least amount of steel necessary, the lowest amount of scrap uh, to make that mower. So that goes into this machine and these machines are very flexible. We can cut whatever we want. It's almost like printing. So we print off that whole run of mowers and then those parts, they move into the bend area. So here we are in the bend area. Once we've cut the steel, we bend it with brake presses like this. What's going on here is that there's a punch and a die, this V die. When this punch goes down, it folds the steel. So what we're doing right here is it's like making origami. We're making bending all the pieces that make up that mower. Now, the more we bend the parts, the stronger the mower is. A bent seam is a lot stronger than a welded seam. So whenever possible, we bend the material, makes the machine as strong as it can be, and also helps uh, that edge look really good on the mower. So one thing that's unique about how we use our brake presses is these guys are really tool change masters. When we set up a part, we actually don't run very many all in a row. And that's because we're a high velocity factory. We're building a lot of mowers in a small area and those machines don't sit in our factory for very long. Once we start the process, that mower goes to the truck right away. So these guys are doing quick changeovers. That means that we're not gonna inventory up a bunch of parts. We're just gonna make exactly the parts we have for that order. He's changing over the tooling right now. When he runs his first part, sometimes even every single part, we use a checker like this. So we check the angle every time. That means that we don't have defects that end up in weld and we end up trying to rework it or something like that. We want the quality up front. All right, so now we're in the Bend supermarket. So all the parts that make up that mower are staged and ready to go. And like I said, because we're a high velocity facility, our facility really isn't that big compared to the number of mowers we make. We make them one piece at a time starting here. So we have uh, a run of mowers all set up here. So uh, this would be four mowers that are on this cart. And these parts, when they're ready, they're loaded onto a cart like this. So this right here is where the mower starts traveling as a single mower. It has a serial number assigned to it here. And all the parts that make up that machine hang on all the pegs on here. This cart travels through the weld area and into paint. And this is the beginning of a mower. So now that we're in weld, the first step here is to build the frame. Here, he's welding up the side wall to a standard intensity. 
And these guys are also really good at changeovers. You can see this fixture here. He can spin that and build whatever mower next. We actually purposely schedule different mowers against each other. We won't build all ZKs for a while, and then all standard X's for a while, and then all Z's for a while. We'll actually mix them together as most mixes as we can be. So that each area of the company has the same amount of work content at all times. This means that we're a lot more efficient in our operation. It also means that training is really important and we have the setup here that we can change over very quickly. So here we are about halfway down the weld area. He's welding a push arm for a standard ZK. These guys are all cross trained. So as that mower goes down, anybody can pull different parts and get that mower built. It's all about uh, sharing the workload and leveling the work throughout the weld area. We have um, all manual welding. Part of that is because we are a high mix manufacturer building a specialty commercial product. That means each part gets individualized attention and is only built for demand. We're not mass producing big heaps of, of uh, parts that go into storage. So we've just come out of the weld area and now we're in the clean off area. What we're doing here is we clean these parts really quickly really well. We go after all the edges, any weld spatter. We get all that off there. And what that does is that we know that the first thing you're going to do with your machine is squeeze them all into the trailer. You go down the road, everything bumps against each other. And when we get these edges nice and clean, we make that paint finish look really good. That means that when you clean up your mower, even if you've got a lot of hours on it, it has a chance of looking a lot newer. So here we are at the paint system. You can see the parts coming out of the wash. They go into a dry off oven and they go around back powder coat gets applied to it, sort of like a static charge where the powder clings to the part. It goes into the oven for about 25 minutes at about 390 degrees. Once it comes out, it begins to cool down, heads down here. Now the advantage to a powder coat finish is that that paint is cured once and for all. It can never be melted again. It's cross-linked, it's sealed really well. And then when underneath that, when you have a wash system that uh, cleans, chemically cleans, and seals the steel, you have a really good finish. Some parts of a mower see really, really tough conditions. Fertilizer, humidity, grass, grit, erosion, all that happening underside the deck. You want the best finish possible, and this is where it all goes on. So now that the steel has cooled down, the powder's cured, we unload the parts. So here we unload all the parts of the mower, and all the parts get uh, divided up and sent to all the different areas within the assembly department. Right off the line, straight into assembly. We try to let the mower never cool down in the process because again, it's all about that mower not sitting idle. As soon as it sits idle, something gets forgotten, something gets lost, something goes wrong. You want to keep the mower moving, it gives the best quality and the best cost we're able to give to you. This is the first step in the process. Here we install the pumps, the platform. If the mower has transmissions, this is where the transmissions go onto it. So here is where we build up the deck. Here we have a 36 inch deck for stainer intensity. We put on the spindles, blades, idler pulley, belts, labeling, all those kinds of things. These guys again are set up for anything. They can do anything from a 36 inch fixed deck for a gear drive walk behind all the way up to a 72 inch deck for a standard ZK. Whatever next, they're set for it. So once we've mounted the engine to the engine deck and we've mounted the cutter deck to the engine deck as well, the mower is starting to take form. And actually at this point you can see something that's unique to nearly all of our machines and that's that our deck drives are split so we have a belt on this side that's only driving the discharge spindle what that means is that this belt here doesn't need to be that tight and also the idler pulley is on the slack side of the belt same thing on this side this idler here is only on the slack side of the belt as it returns to the engine what this does is it means that your belt nearly lasts twice as long as if you have a, a idler on your tension side that's one less thing you have to worry about. It's way more durable. It costs a little bit more, but it's definitely worth it. Also, you can see here, this muffler here has a dual outlet. This is a ZK. And uh, what that does is it means that the noise from any one side of the machine is reduced. It's diffused in multiple directions. Also, it looks pretty good. So right in the middle of the assembly area is where we prep all the operator stations. So in this case, this is an upright for a standard ZK. This is all put together ahead of time. So when the machine's ready at that point, it's timed where it's ready to go right on. This one is actually unique because this mower has two gas tanks adding up to a ton of fuel capacity. And also it has two oil reservoirs because this machine has split systems. That means each system on the mower is independent of the other side. And so if anything were to go wrong with one system, the other side is not affected by it at all. They're completely independent. So this is the last station in the process where we build the mower. Last thing to go on to it are the wheels. 
This is the last step in the process of actually building the mower itself. We uh, add all the oil, we put a, a gas tank on the side here, we start it up, warm it up, make sure everything is responding how it should. Then we move into this area where we actually dyno every single mower. What this dyno does is tells us if there's anything wrong with the transmission's power output, maybe the engine governor, there could be different things that could be not running just right on the machine. So here, we're able to do a rundown on it, get a printout to know that the machine is performing how it should. So here on the screen, you can see that it's measuring a couple different things. And then we're ready to go. We lock it out. And this mower moves straight to crating. Here we are in crating. Now that the mower is fully completed, we put in a crate. Again, they go straight from running to here. So the mower never cools down even before it, uh, it goes into the warehouse. Once this is crated, we stage it here for a couple days until it, it uh, is assigned a truck and it goes straight out to a distributor. We first sell the mower to a wholesale distributor, which is located in different regions of the country or the world, and then they service your dealer directly in that region. So from here, we put together a whole truckload and ships out. One thing that's really important to us as a manufacturer of mowers is all our suppliers. There's a lot of great suppliers out there that make components for our mowers and for our industry whether it's clutches, engines, transmissions, belts, bearings, uh, whatever the case may be, uh, we rely really heavily on those suppliers. This is where all that material comes in, and most of that material is designed to meet exactly the schedule of mowers we have put in the schedule. So we bring in just what we need, we're turning that inventory, it's always fresh, it's always accurate, it has very uh, reduced chances of getting damaged. And those suppliers are a really big important piece of the pie and, and a piece of the mower that you get. Now the last and maybe most important of our part of our process is the parts department. So here is where we fulfill parts orders. We know that your machine is going to last for many, many years and that you're going to need parts throughout the life of that machine and when you need those parts, you need them now. That's why uh, we have wholesale distributors all throughout the country that stock those parts so they're nearby and right within reach of your dealer whenever they need them. So now that you've seen our process of building mowers, let me talk a little bit about the people. Our people are very important to us and the why we do what we do is also very important to us. We've got a video called our motto, or E2B4. We'll put a link to that video here in the description. Check that out to learn, learn a little bit more about why we do what we do. We hope you enjoyed this video and if you have any questions, be sure to put them in the comments.